morning. Welcome to worship on the second Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you are tuning in with us. We want to make sure that you are aware that this summer I will be taking a few months away from the congregations for what is called a sabbatical. During that time, we will continue to offer our video for those who wish to tune in, uh, but we will be using a couple of different sources to provide our sermons. We hope that you uh, enjoy this time, and we lo I look forward to returning with you in September. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
You are the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the fifth chapter of Hosea. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read from Psalm 50. Listen, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your burnt offerings are always before me. I will not accept a calf from your stalls, nor goats from your pens, for all the wild animals of the forest are mine the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and the cre creatures of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall honor me. A reading from the fourth chapter of Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom Abraham believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver considering the pro concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what God had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and who was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
According to Matthew, glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And Jesus said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed Jesus. As Jesus sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before them, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman, who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years, came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players on the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hold on, I, I need my glasses. How many times a day do I say this? These days, I need my glasses to drive, to read small print in front of me. Thankfully, I don't need them to preach, but I need them to see the TV, sometimes to see the computer or to read. I literally need glasses these days to see the world through a different lens so that I can function, so that I can see. Today, our scripture, it helps us to think about looking at it also through a new lens, through a figurative lens. As we read these texts, as we hear them among us, it helps for us to approach, to look through this new lens. We start with Jesus, with this interaction with the Pharisees. You know, so often in our stories from the Gospel, it seems like we've set the Pharisees up as some kind of bad guy. They, their interaction with Jesus is often seen as argumentative, as conflicting, or even hostile. But in our Gospel today, what if we viewed this interaction with Jesus and his disciples as cordial, as friendly, perhaps even familial. What if those Pharisees were gathered at that home, at that meal with them, like friends and family, like people from the community? What if these Pharisees were people that Jesus knew from the temple, from his childhood, from his life? What if they were more of colleagues? And what if this question that they asked the disciples, was it meant to trap or trick Jesus, but rather a very honest, a legitimate question? Why does your master eat with those who are sinners, those who are outside the customs and the laws that, that we have been raised to follow and, and to, to heed? The Pharisees are the ones who have been taught precisely how to live. They, they know the codes and the customs and the laws that, that God set down from the time of Moses. They are the ones who help the community to keep, to keep these laws, to stay in a right relationship with God. They are the ones who help the community to know what is right, what is wrong, who are in and and who are out, and to understand what those consequences are when one lives outside that law. But then Jesus comes in. After generations of keeping this very precise law, Jesus comes in with a whole different approach, a new approach to how to live in God's relationship. Jesus comes in and gives them a new lens by which to view this activity of God in the world. And in this interaction with those Pharisees, Jesus suggests that the one who need to hear God's love, God's power, God's grace, are not the ones who have been living inside that law, the ones who have been keeping the commandments, the ones who have been following as they've been told rather the ones who need this love and power of God are those outside the law. And then Jesus invites them to study this, this piece of scripture. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. It makes us wonder, what if Jesus, in inviting them, in, in suggesting that they go and learn what that means, what if Jesus is inviting them into further conversation, into a time to ponder, to study what this means, to truly examine what Jesus is about, what he is doing, to truly come to understand this new way of living in right relationship 
For when we go back and we look at that passage from the prophet Hosea, we see this interaction with, again, the people of Israel. We see how they were interacting with God and how God was encouraging the people to remain faithful, to live in God's covenant with them. We hear in that passage from Hosea, God calling to the people from far off, calling to them out of frustration, out of disappointment, begging the people to come back and live in relationship with God. And we hear this echo back from the people as they are again proclaiming their faithfulness, proclaiming their trust in what God will do for them, that God will restore them like, like the spring rains, that God will redeem them and raise them up. But again, God calls out to them, knowing, knowing the, the nature of humankind, knowing how quickly we we come back to God and then we turn and wander away. God calls out to them. Calls out to them to, to not just live by the law, but to live with a faithfulness in their hearts. To trust in God. To live in a way that's not only helpful for themselves, but, but helpful for all of humankind in a way that shows mercy and justice for one another to live ethically, to live faithfully, to live in a way that's not just giving empty sacrifices again and again to mess up and turn and offer sacrifice and get back in relationship with God and then turn again and sin and turn back and sacrifice again, but rather to live in that covenant deeply and mercifully. This is what God is calling for the people to do. And so as Jesus is inviting these Pharisees around him into this same kind of relationship, it's as if Jesus is saying, what if we live instead by mercy? rather than the law? What, what if instead of leading with where a person has fallen short, where they have been pushed to the edge or pushed out, what if we lead with forgiveness, with compassion and kindness and grace? What if those Pharisees lead first with God's love for humankind, God's love for them, God's love that has returned again and again to the covenant God has made with humankind, where God has again drawn people back into relationship with God. What if in this passage, in this invitation to learn what this means, what if Jesus is inviting them to a new, a different, a better way of living in relationship with God? A way that he goes on to show in his actions. A way that doesn't condemn this ritually unclean woman. This woman who literally has been bleeding for 12 years. This woman who has not been able to go to temple, has not been able to pray, has literally had the life pouring out of her. But instead of condemning her, instead of pointing out how she is outside that law, Jesus turns and shows mercy, compassion, shows healing. Jesus restores her to this community and draws her back into right relationship with God. And then again, as Jesus is invited into this home of the leader, and again doesn't concern himself with the consequences of touching a dead body, but instead reaches out, holds her by the hand, and draws her into new life, brings her back into the community, and gives the community hope. In this story, Jesus 
teaches this group of leaders, those around him, teaches all who hear this story a new way of living in community, a new lens by which to see God at work in the world, a way that welcomes, accepts, honors, celebrates, a way that forgives, forgives all those who live in relationship with God, a way that invites us out of that love, out of that forgiveness and compassion and mercy, a way that invites us then to live differently with God, to live faithfully, to trust, to give our whole hearts and lives to God. Jesus gives us a model today that, that we follow to this day, a way that we view this world through this loving lens of God, through the lens through which God views us as God's beloved children, forgiven and redeemed, a way to view this world in appreciation for all that God has given us. And so we then turn, we view the world through that same lens, through the lens through which God views us. We view one another and this world through this new lens, this lens that loves and forgives, that honors and accepts, this lens that, that shows mercy. Amen. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray, O oh God, for the church. Open our hearts to any who live on the margins of society, that the whole world would live out your abundant mercy and love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for creation, tend forests and fields, safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals, preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans, and send rain to water the earth, revive lands recovering from natural disasters. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the nations, Awaken in our leaders compassion for people who have felt forgotten or neglected, and inspire policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need. Accompany anyone enduring chronic illness, any who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain of my mind, body, or spirit. We especially pray for Carol, Cindy, Vivian, Albert, Dick, Doris, Deborah, and Phil. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the eradication of racial hatred. On this week when we commemorate the Emmanuel Nine, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, O God, for Barnabas and all the saints. Renew our faith that you can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved dead to new life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. 
Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Trust that wherever we are gathered, Christ is present. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.